How does God work through you? God is real if he speaks to you or through you. See by being him seeing and feel physically you're being instructed into what is right from wrong right decision is made followed by right actions this is how you know that you have the Christ in you this is an example this to follow is an example so please treat it as such for we are foundationally human and we can only assume but we believe that it is Jesus speaking to us through us often the devil will try to enter step in the way or stand in the way and you'll realize this when you suddenly out of the blue in a conversation with somebody else or to another person perhaps passionately cuss excessively you can't figure out what the I shouldn't be cussing why am I doing this you know the example the following example that we bring is thus taking a nephew out to do much needed shopping we had to like buy some food for the cats that we got right and to buy him a late belated birthday his birthday was the day before he came over from Australia to visit he wanted to see his uncle right he was umming and aahing and then he finally turns up so he decided, okay, we'll, we'll take him out, do some shopping, get him a birthday cake, give him some goodies, you know, some junk food, whatever, whatever he wanted, and celebrate his birthday with him, spend time with him. So we did the shopping, we had this trolley because we got too much, got too passionate about what we needed, forgot the actual trolley that we usually pull, you know, to uh, put the shopping in completely forgot about it left it at home so only had like a bag on the back sort of thing so there wasn't enough room in there to uh, put all the shopping in a whole shopping cart right so we went to go and get this other cart from another store that didn't have those blockers on it you, you travel so far and it jams up so you can't take the trolley out of the supermarket area right we thought because we've done it before we tried to get out with this trolley in another direction we thought oh yeah, if you go that way that'll jam up but it seems to be like the whole barrier around that supermarket there's a new system that you're using because their trolleys end up down the road some people are in a river so you get sick of like going around trying to find one so you're trying to save money with that sort of stuff so we I told him well you stay here we'll go get this other one out from outside this other shop right it doesn't have those wheel jams so he put it in there. We decided, oh, let's go to McDonald's. Yeah, showed him some McDonald's. Asked him what he wanted and so forth. And he suggested this and that. He says, well, we could probably leave the trolley outside. We could sit down eating our order and watch it. He says, no, 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 no. I'll guard it because you, know, you just don't trust nobody. So, oh, okay, he's onto it. So he decided he'll stand outside and guard it. So we went in there, ordered food for the both of us. And this young girl, she must be new. We actually asked her if she knew she was new to the job or whatever. She said, yeah. So she was using the till, but she kept missing things up, so she kept calling the supervisor, who was pretty patient, right? So we had these Asians waiting in line, and we thought, oh, they might get a bit upset, so I was trying to move it along, but she kept missing things up. And then she eventually gave us the change, okay? She said it was 52.60, so we gave her 52 Right, or something like that and um, she gave us some change but then she messed up because he gave us $50 the bill was 52 we paid for that so why are you giving us $50 back we were like really patient with her because yeah, we knew she was new 
she just she was too inexperienced on that particular tool with that machine, right? So she gets the supervisor. And she finds out that she'd build us, or you know, the cost of it was a hundred dollars. So she gave us fifty dollars back. So we explained it to the supervisor. You know, it's not her fault. You know, ask her, ask her the question like, if we had have stolen it, you know, walked out only paying two dollars sixty for that fifty-two dollar meal, would she have had to pay for it? She said, "Oh no, she would have just cancelled it on a tool thing, right?" But we thought, nah, somebody, probably a manager above that one would say, there's fifty dollars missing out of the tool. Either someone stole it, or someone messed up, and they'd probably be on camera or something like that, whatever. Right? And they'd find out it was her. So this poor, I guess she was sixteen, seventeen. She looked pretty young. She'll, uh, they'll eventually find out she'll get money deducted from her wages, right? Which is yeah, upsetting for them because they're working so hard and then suddenly, boom, they're loose. Yeah? They feel like discouraged, ashamed, all that sort of stuff. So we try to prevent that sort of thing from happening. But this lady was all good with her and you know, she said, well, you actually owe us 60 more cents. So he, did she give any change? Oh, not to really remember. Looked in her wallet, whatever, no change there. She might have. So he just said, oh, here you go, here's $2.00 to cover that 60 cents so she gives us the change back all that sort of stuff. and it was good right so we were standing there we thought we, were, we had that notion well she just gave us $50 we could like take off and we'd only pay $2.60 you know that thought comes across to you right but this small still voice in our head said no 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 don't do that because she'll probably get charged for it if $50 is missing all what we previously said right so you know be honest you could do that run off with you know and be all boasty but do it this way Give the fifty dollars back. Tell the lady, you know, for the sake of that young person who shouldn't be on the till anyway, she's inexperienced. You know, do it that way. And it's like we wouldn't say miraculous, but it's like quite extraordinary how the Asians waiting in line sometimes to get people. You know, people get really impatient. Not just saying specifically them, specifically them. You know, start cussing and whatever in their language, or whatever, or amongst themselves. Oh, it's taking so long. Hurry up. You know, all this sort of stuff. There are other people who are arrogant like that, that that would do that, right? Fair enough, within reason, good reason to, right? But they were amazingly calm, right? They didn't utter a word. So it ended up all being sorted out and you know, we made the right decision, we guess. And then off we went, went home. You know, well, we sat outside ate the chips because the chips are hot, pretty hot, right? You know? And by the time you get home, which is about half an hour away or something, walking, they'll be frozen cold, eh? Being winter and all that sort of stuff. And yuck, you know? Didn't care for that zero sugar drink. It's crap, right? I don't drink that rubbish, yeah? Because there's always no other choice. That's the only drink you get. Okay, you can't swap it. You can't give us something like a normal Coke, you know? But didn't worry about it. So we sat down for a while. We were talking. I was quite loud. So he says, oh, you know, you're talking too loud, that's why everyone's looking at you. Oh, okay, so, yeah, that, that's good that he noted that, because sometimes you get too excited and you talk too loud, right? You get <laughs> wondering why everyone was going past and looking at me specifically. Oh, okay, yeah, good one, nephew. You got to tone it down a bit. So I went home, ate the rest of our uh, burgers or that sort of stuff. So we believe that somewhere along the way, we'll receive, like, a a reward, a blessing in God's time. Okay, we don't go, well, yeah, I did this, I was great, I, I didn't rip them off, so where's my reward? You know, it'll come in due time. I could get a sudden amount of money or somebody comes gives me a whole lot of food. Oh, we went to this place to get this food, whatever, food pass or whatever, and here's half a box full of food that we don't like, right? That sort of thing comes in that way, in God's time, not when we demand it. Why do we know this? Because from experiences before, these little acts, it's like really extraordinary. We went to, well, myself went to a the same shopping supermarket and there was a checkout counter free, but the lady said, oh, no, 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 we closed it down. So I said, oh, okay, lady, Muslim lady, you've only got like a little bit, jump in front of me. So she went to, but then the lady says, oh, now, now it's open. Like, oh, my gosh, make up your mind, lady, right? So she ends up in there. Unbeknowing that you're, to us, or to me, that the husband was actually at the end of the line, uh, end of the uh, checkout, perhaps, 
He just looked like he was standing there, right? So I thought, oh, okay, didn't really worry about it much. And then went to pay for my shopping that I got. It came to about $100 or something, right? And this lady says, well, your money's no good here. And I was like, hey, what? You know, you can't use your card. He's like, hey, what? You know, all that sort of stuff. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. And then this um, lady says, well, this man down the end paid for your shopping. I was like, oh, okay, it's one of those funny shows, right? Any minute now, they're going to pop out and go, ha ha, surprise, we're from this show, this show, and you just, you know, won this magnificent prize, all this sort of crap, but no, no, nothing happened. And she says, no, 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 for real, he paid for it. So it's like, well, hurry up, put my stuff in the trolley so I can thank him, you know, face to face properly, right? But by this time, he'd taken off and was hopping in his car. So I said, come on, quick, quick. So they finally did it, and I zapped out there with the trolley to this entrance to thank him, but he'd gone, right? So we think, that it was because we showed some kindness by allowing his wife to go into our aisle, even though she uh, check out, even though she didn't, right? She ended up in the free one and went through there, right? So he considered that. So he paid the hundred dollars for our shopping. So that, was, that blew us away, right? And then uh, a daughter's friend wanted some cigarettes, and you know, she had no money. What if so she's looking on the road for old oh, used cigarette butts? Who disgusting, right? Uh, that's what people do when they smoke they, they get desperate and that's what they're looking for it, just to have that nicotine so we're walking along the street end up at McDonald's he's always shouting McDonald's right that same McDonald's didn't quite have enough for this $27 order it was like twenty six fifty or something we had twenty six ten. so like, yeah, yeah hang on hang on so she's getting all upset right and then we were sitting there and then this lady happened to sit right next to us right in front of us sort of thing with her kids right and she said oh here's some change so you can buy it. Like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, lady. You know, you're very kind. So I was telling this girl, oh, yeah, stop being a snowflake, cheer up, you know, turn your frown upside down, smile, we've got some money for some McDonald's. And then your husband come along, and he said, no, 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 keep, put your money away, I've just bought some for you, like, you know, 20 or 30, maybe $50 worth, for both of us. So I was like, oh, thank you, thank you very much. And apparently they were Jehovah Witnesses, right? So... A Muslim paid for our shopping, the shopping a couple of days before, and then these JWs, the Pacific Islanders, right? They, you know, they weren't the obvious JWs with the suits and the, well, and that's Mormons with the name tag, right? Yeah, that sort of thing, shirt and tie and all that sort of stuff. They were just ordinary people. And they had children feeding It's like, well, they bought some food for their children, so they were right. So they just said, here you go, we bought it for you, this man, right? We were like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So... Maybe a day or so later, maybe this is our reward. We don't know. You know, we're only assuming. Walk along the street and you find twenty dollars in the gutter or something. That sort of thing. So that's why we strongly believe in that concept that you should be charitable. Often be wary these people on the side of the road because they're using you wanting money to supply their ad addictions, right? Their drugs, their alcohol, their cigarettes, their vape, whatever. Right? More than often, right? So, still be charitable, give them food. You know, go into, say, like a, what they call here, a warehouse, um, and they have really cheap chips and lollies and maybe cake or something like that, right? Whatever, right? You grab that and you give it to them, right? Instead of giving them the money. They may object, but you got something, bro. But, you know, don't uh, bite the hand that's feeding you or, you know, look a gift horse in the mouth and all that sort of stuff, right? All those old sayings, right? So, here you go. Give them a smile and you know, off you go. You don't have to, well, you can say, look, you know, God said, if you want to, it's up to you. You don't have to, right? You don't have to be like pushy, pushy and say, right, now you have to join the church, <laughs> sign up and all this sort of stuff and bash them with the Bible, right? You just say, well, it looks like you got problems, bro, so why don't you try Jesus? You give them a little pamphlet or whatever, a little booklet, you know? And then God bless you and away you go. You don't have to be there hours trying to force them into conversion, right? It's a natural be natural, you know, be human in your approach. Learn public relations, whatever. Better people skills, you know. Yeah, so we probably, even though this girl didn't really thank us for help, helping her, you know, had been patient with her and all this sort of stuff, hopefully we left her on a better note that she didn't get in trouble because she, well, it's their fault. You know, she's not. They should test to see if she's fully capable and experience right to do it all right to work the money machine thing here right before they put it on there 
Okay, maybe it's short stuffed and they need somebody there quick. They need to find somebody that's experienced. You know? It's like you don't put an amateur on the window where people are making the order and they mess up, you know, drop it and all that sort of stuff. Spill it everywhere. It's just not good business practice, is it? So you have to have that person who's highly trained, who's past that level, who's totally competent, can use one of these machines without having to call a supervisor six or seven times. Okay, because they don't really know what they're doing. That can cause them mental anguish, problems, uh, um, feel discouraged, useless, self-doubt, all that sort of stuff, right? Okay, but the one that we went to, oh, the week before, the, the food was just immaculate, right? The chips are like gold and brown, you know, like brown, not burnt, not hard, all that sort of stuff, no mouldy, you know, the old potato, black bits of the potato on it, all that sort of stuff. They were beautiful, and the hamburgers were beautiful, even though a bit too saucy. Uh, was it some sort of barbecue beef um, combo thing? Even the drink was nice, you know. It didn't taste like um, a mixture of Coke and a uh, Coca Cola and uh, Pepsi with fake sugar in it. Right? It's really, really nice. So it complimented the uh, person in the cafe because the others were busy. We were presented you know, a, a really pretty girl, you know, probably about their twenties, with a great smile. You know, it was all. Oh, it was just brilliant. Went back there the other day. It wasn't so good, but you, know, it, you can't expect it to be perfect all the time, right? But yeah, yeah, it's still pretty good. So yeah, we suggest that, right? Um, as a Christian, you should recognize that you have the Christ in you when you see through Him. Like it's like it's like Him through your eyes, right? And a little voice saying, you know, this is the right action to do. Don't do that. Do this. It's more beneficial. Etc. Etc. Right. Stop. Think, and make the right decision. Okay. So you feel him through you. Kind of a, probably a hard concept for many to understand, especially atheists or something like that. You go, ah, all this sort of stuff, right? You 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 don't have that experience. You don't have that. Yeah, you don't basically have that experience. Uh, well, this is the way we see it, right? Because there's always this little voice in the back of our head, and lots and lots of different situations where we could do this. And the result, the consequence of wrong action could end us in jail, end us up in jail, right? In court or in jail. Or deceiving somebody like in this case with McDonald's, you take the $50 that they give you as change, and you've only paid $2. You know, there's people out there that take advantage of it. It's an opportunity, right? Everyone has an opportunity. But you've got to stop and think, make the right decision, right? Okay? Because somewhere along the way, the consequences are going to come to you. They're going to come upon you. Whether you believe it's karmic, uh, what you sow to, you reap, pay back, you know, pay back some biatch or whatever, whatever you believe, right? You know, and you wonder, oh, why did this happen to me? Oh, okay, think about it, go back, oh, because I, yeah, I did this, yeah, I thought I was clever, I ripped off the McDonald's people, but I, I gave me $50 change, I paid $52 and I ripped them off and they only paid two dollars and you're boasting to all your friends, right? And they may think secretly you know, behind the scenes, oh, what a what a cheater, what a lie, you know, what a rip off guy, you know. So dishonest, never trust this fella, right? Give him like money to go get us something at Sam McDonald's and come back here and he gives us two cents oh, two cents, ten cents, whatever. Right? The, where the meal was only like thirty dollars, he's pocketed fifteen or twenty, right? You know? You can't trust this guy people don't tell you that face to face because you know, they don't want to embarrass you or, or maybe they drop hints and all that sort of stuff right or they tell their friend gossip gossip don't trust this guy I gave him 50 bucks the meal was 30 where's the 20 change he pocketed it right for his probably buy him some weed or whatever he, he had in mind right okay dishonesty yeah. so that's why we the ministry of the world truth have those policies in place because of our life experiences okay in our walk with the Christ. We're not saying it's perfect. Okay, we're up and down. People say, oh, you Christian, you know, and they expect you to be 100%. We say, well, we'll be true, we'll admit, right, okay, that we're, at times we're semi, okay? We're not perfect. We're up and down, but we're working on it. And they go, oh, okay, that's cool, you know? Some may say, well, there's something really different about you, you know? Or some people get really angry because it's like, here, have this, have this. We stole it from here, 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 take this, yeah? We pinched it, you have it, right? No, no, we don't want that, right? Or have this, no, no, we don't want that because we don't know you, 
You know, well, how do we, we know that you didn't make this cake and put something in it? We don't know that, right? No, no. Yeah, because people make you paranoid, right? So you've got to be really, really careful. <laughs> you may know them, but do you really trust them? You just have to be very, very wary, okay, these days. Yeah, because if you <laughs> receive something, someone comes over to your house and gives you this computer and says, here you go, here you go, I can't fix it so it's yours, right? And you know how to fix it or whatever. If suddenly your house gets raided sometime after, cops look at the serial number, oh, this is a stolen computer. Oh, what? Where'd you get this from? What are you supposed to say? I got it from my friend. No, you can't knock on him. You'll be all like, oh, you're a, you're a police informant, you're a narc, all this stuff, right? Because they've been, they got caught, they got arrested, right? For you saying, well, this guy gave it to me. You get done for receiving stolen goods. It's a weird law, but it's like, yeah, you didn't know. You just thought this guy was gifting it to you because he didn't want it anymore. He might lie and say, oh, it was mine, but yeah, it blew up or something and I don't know what's wrong with it. Can you fix it? And if you can fix it, you can have it. All the time he's stolen it. And they say, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll take that into mind. But you still go to court and charge for receiving stolen goods, knowing that it was stolen. How the hell do you know it was stolen if the guy didn't tell you it was stolen, right? Oh, yeah, maybe you know in your subconscious, all this sort of bullcrap. How the hell do you know? You just thought, yeah, because this guy said, oh, it was mine, belonged to my kids, but for some reason it messed up, so I decided, oh, yeah, you, you can fix computers, you can have a look at it and fix it. If you can fix it, you can have it. Yeah, free of charge. But all the time behind the scenes, I've stolen it. Okay? If you come to that point where you know, hey, this has got all these photos of some club, old person's golf club or something on it, or, you know, golf course club or whatever, their hangout, you know that it's stolen, okay? So, you check out the date, whatever, how long ago was this machine built, one of these photos, how old are these photos? Oh, 1970, what's it now, 2024? Well, it's, it's been stolen for a while, so what can you do, you know? You can ring them up, and then you get charged for receiving stolen goods because they report you to the cops. Oh, this is where our old computer went. Bust this guy, you know? So what do you do? But wipe the whole thing, because, yeah, no point, yeah? <laughs> Just pay for forgiveness or whatever. Yeah, you got to try to figure that one out, eh? You know? You wipe the whole thing, the whole system, and put a Linux on there or something. Yeah, it's, life is very, very hard at times, right? Decision-wise, you got to go, well, should I really ring them up, put myself in the poop, end up in the court, end up in the prison or something? having stolen goods yeah receiving stolen goods all that sort of stuff or so just tell this dude you stole it bro I know you stole it take it back maybe that's a better method right or just completely throw it out but it seems like a waste of a machine see, see those temptations there those decisions you gotta make there so I keep it it's a good freaking machine I can play Windows 98 games on there but it's not mine it's stolen obviously I have to get rid of it having nothing in my house that I'm coveting Right, that's stolen, whatever, and I'm, I'm holding on to it. Yeah? You could give it away to someone else, but then you're passing on your stolen goods to somebody else, right? Except to accept to So you're causing them to cover it, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's really, really. Life is complicated, eh? You've got all these decisions you've got to make. You know? They could be right, they could be wrong, they could be dire, they could be rewarding. So this is basically a video giving you that example of what we go through. It, well, not every day, but, you know, weekly, monthly, God-wise. So we are basing our ministry on life experiences in relation to the biblical scriptures, being the original, ancient, very old uh, Tav Ashrit Old Testament manuscripts, translated into English, and also the Galilean Aramaic New Testament manuscripts, from the original apostolic church of the East Restored, translated by a native-born Syrian, uh, native-born Aramaic-speaking translator from Mesopotamia, Syria, 15 years Alexander. So yeah, it's it's like scales. Life is like scales. It goes tilts one way, tilts the other. Right? There's injustice, there's justice, there's right, there's wrong. Good decision, bad decision. Reward. Uh, consequences, rewards, uh, payback, you know, for what you've done. It's, yeah, it's a balancing act. So you've got to try and 
if you're a Christian or a believer in the God or the Christ, moved by the power of the Holy Spirit, you've got to like have this new remind. You've got to adapt this or adopt this new renewed mindset. Okay, you go, you go down and get, you get baptized. You go under the water. You come up. Like it's like a symbolic of dying with Christ. Christ died on the cross, suffered. So you basically go under the water, come up, and you, you've died along with Christ, right? Well, that's symbolic term, right? So you become this new being. You throw off your old worldly self that you used to be, and you start to read the scriptures, which is the seed. It builds up in you all that knowledge. You can recount those verses, especially when the devil's coming at you with temptation. You can say, well, you know, it's written, thou shalt not steal, etc., etc., get lost devil, all that sort of stuff, right? And live this righteous, pious act that you've been called to through God, you know, through the Christ, through the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, being led with the Holy, by the Holy Spirit, right? Who's your first counselor, your God, etc., etc. Yeah, so this is basically just, as we said in the beginning, an example. We can't live your Christian life for you. We can only guide you. So we at the Ministry of the Real Truth, we said formerly, we, and other videos as well, we created a, a, honest, a policy, right? A business policy, ministry policy. That honesty is our best policy. Okay, so we try to, we strive to stick to that, right? Live by that. And then we have uh, a belief in old time chivalry or chivalry, right? Where a man's honour is a man's honour, so he should be honourable and honour it. Keep his word, keep his promises, right? But even scripture tells you that, you know, don't make a vow, don't make a promise, because you'll probably never keep it, you'll break it, right? As we have experienced, making promises that we couldn't keep. Or trying to fulfill our own lust or perversions when, you know, we're worldly self. Oh, to, to a girl we're trying to you know, get with, you know, do the wild thing with and say, yeah, I'll take, a, I'll take this, the moon out of the sky for you, or the night sky, all this sort of crap, right? Stars, all that, it's all baloney to you know, try and get your rocks off, right? You know? All that sort of stuff. And she falls for it because she's all dreamy and, you know, all princess-like, all full of fantasy. She believes that crap, right? Because she wants something and you want something, so, you know, she's willing to give it, hearing all this crap, right? Um, you can't live up to it. You break your promises. You cheat on her, you know, like, behind your back or, you know, all this gossip about it, all that sort of stuff, right? You basically break your promises, you break, break your vows, so you might get married and you promise, oh, you know, till death do us part with this. But because it's a habit, you cheat on it, because you've done it since you were young, right? So, yeah, it's a habit. You keep doing it, right? Yeah, so basically we have those that policy in place. Honesty is our best policy. Chivalry or chivalry uh, as well, old-time practice. And... Uh, we understand that we are human. This makes us human. We make mistakes from time to time. So to err is human, but to forgive is divine. You know, so for us to be forgiven by God or the Christ through Christ, we have to forgive others for what they do to us, throw at us, etc., etc. Right? You know, it's all part and parcel. Charity. You know, it's not all doing all works, as it says in the scriptures. It's like faith as well. You've got to have that faith, right? Okay. Expect a reward, okay, of your charitable acts, etc., etc., like that, etc., etc., like that. But don't expect it, right? I did this good deed, God. Now give me one million dollars <laughs> tomorrow. That sort of stuff, right? Because you're not going to get it. Okay, leave it to God to do it in His time. It may suddenly appear, like you know, next week or a month later. You're doing your shopping, and some guy pays for your shopping, and you're like, oh, "Come on, this has got to be some sort of funny uh, game show prank, right?" You know that sort of thing, like we already mentioned. You know, it's unexpected things like that. The tax department might ring you up or send you a letter and say, "Hey, we owe you seven hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars." Hey, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. You know, all this legal stuff. Or someone might go, "Hey, I won the lotto." And because you showed me kindness before, here you go, here's twenty dollars. <laughs> Out of there. Half a million, here's twenty dollars, you know, that sort of stuff. But at least you you receive that reward in God's time. You know, it might be different kind of blessings. It may not be monetary, it could be food wise or whatever, you know. It comes in different shapes and forms. Etc. Or even it might be 
some JW or whatever turns up and tells you something. You know, hey, I never realised that about the scriptures. You know, they actually get something right that particular day. And you go, yeah, and you look at it and you go, yeah, oh, thanks for that, man. You're really appreciative because you didn't realise that, right? And they were sent, they were used as tools to come and present you that. Well, maybe you had something on your mind and you couldn't work it out and then suddenly here comes the answer through some unexpected visitor. Maybe it could even be a Mormon, you know? They may say something that's like, wow, okay, wow, yeah, wow, you just give me the answer to what I was pondering. You know, and you go, oh, it's a dirty Mormon, oh, it's a dirty JW, and you're like, shoo, shoo, shoo. At least, you know, give them that time to to tell you their stuff, right? Speak you their stuff. You don't have to join, you know, sign up and, you know, join up their uh, temple or whatever and fork over all your money, yeah, within that hour. Yeah, don't fall for that sort of trick, eh? But, yeah, you can, you can talk to them because they're still human beings at the end of the day. Just have to be wary of what they're saying, compare it to the scriptures. Know the scriptures. It's it's really good to have to believe, even better to have faith. But really, you should know. You know when someone comes at you with scriptures, hey man, that's just, yeah, that's exactly what it says. That's exactly what it means. Or no, 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 you're twisting it, bro. You're talking a load of rubbish. Yeah, you know? oh, we were all angels once, and God, we sinned, so God kicked us all out, and now we're trying to get back in there. Does it say that scripture? Can you prove it? Can you show us? Nope. Well, then it's all hearsay, isn't it? You know, same situation when people say, oh, this, 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 this. And you go, well, how about some sources to the information or some links to those sources that you're claiming? Someone said this, someone said that. The scripture says this, the scripture says that. They don't give it to you. It's hearsay. It's all fluff. They can't back it up. Right? That's why we always provide sources and links, or links to sources, rather, to this information we're not saying it's 100% correct every time because there's always something that they may have misquoted or been misinformed about or something like that so you have to do further research we really appreciate the people that say well this is what it really says we believe what it really says so we go okay give us a link to that you know link to that source that information so they do that and we go check it out and then we credit them oh yeah okay thanks bro because what you the link you gave us to that thing yeah okay we we understand it better okay this guy said this which is probably a little bit flawed or misinformation or whatever because we look behind the scenes okay this guy was a, a sham artist or whatever 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 he's up to right or he's been known by his peers to give false information you can't be trusted well that's the stuff right we didn't realize that yeah so if we're ever doing the research looking behind it investigating using investigative journalism looking for the you know, the dirt, the simplest way to put it, uh, easy way to put it, you know, because there may be something behind the scenes where the guy is saying anti-homosexuality, anti-this, anti-that, you know, and behind the scenes, news report, the guy got caught in a motel wearing a frilly dress, running around like a sissy, right, with this other prostitute or whatever he is, he or she is, whatever, right, in this motel, <laughs> You know, he's supposed to be this pastor that's supposed to be all holy roly and against, you know, homosexuality, blah, 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 all this and stuff, and yet he's the one practicing it. Or like that, what was that book we read or something, that video we saw, the things my pastor said uh, couldn't use, couldn't listen to and stuff, and yet when this guy went to his house, because the pastor said to him, I can't have... Hollywood movies of any sort because they're all demonic or this sort of stuff. You can't have this secondary or sedentary music, you know, hip hop, rap, all that sort of stuff because it's all from the devil, all this sort of stuff. And then he went to his house for lunch or something and he looked around and he saw all these videos, all this music, you know, CDs, whatever, that he told him he couldn't ever listen to. Like, what's with this? You got this collection of this stuff that you're telling me I can't have in my house, right? And yet you've got them all here. What a hypocrite. Okay, so hopefully this video is some sort of, well, we hope it's a uh, lesson of insight to you out there. Um, yeah, as a Christian, you need to stop, be quiet, you know, listen to what someone else has to say before you blab, 
Okay, start pointing the bony finger, judgment, all that sort of stuff, as many do. We, we're just as guilty as everybody else, so we're not saying we're perfect holy rollies, right? Yeah, you need to stop, you need to think, listen to what, you need to stop first, right? Shut up, and then listen to what these people have to say. And then you can, you know, let it go around your head, check out the scriptures, all this sort of stuff, and say, well, you're actually incorrect. It's all to, it's all done in love, right? Reproof, correction, all that sort of stuff. You're not going, well, you know, if you don't, this is what it says, and now you're going to go to hell, and you dirty J.W., all this sort of crap, right? That's insanity. They're still human beings at the end of the day. They've just been misguided from their hierarchy, the people at the top, say the Watchtower, or the Mormon elders way at the top, you know, all that hierarchy. They're telling them, this is how it is, because we're the chosen of God, God speaks to us alone, not you, um, and this is what he said, and this is what our prophet found, all this sort of stuff, even that it you know, could be phony, could be fake, fraudulent, whatever, okay, if you do the research and prove that it is, okay, don't just say it's fake when you haven't even done any research on it, uh, you know, you verify that, yeah, it's, it's all incorrect, and it's coming from the top, but they're forcing people to believe it, if you don't, you get excommunicated, if you don't pay the tithes, you won't progress, all this sham scam stuff, right, you have to be fully aware of that, okay, so, yeah, again, we hope that this is a good video, gives you this insight, wakes you up to these possibilities, right, of consequence, reward, or dire uh, results from your, you know, your, the choices that you made, the right choices, the bad choices, that, you know, God speaks through you, that small audible voice, you may not recognize it, it might not go, Moses, thou shalt not, you know, like that sort of thing like you see on the Hollywood movies. It might be like this quiet, still, unusual voice inside your head. Uh, like, that's strange. It's, it's a very different voice, you know. It's a bit musical or something like that. Whatever, however you perceive it, right? And then you have this feeling that, you know, God or Christ is speaking for you and telling you, well, look, you know, this girl's giving you $50, for a $52 meal that you paid for, <laughs> you can walk away and get ripped, you know, rip her off, but stop and think, you know, are you going to do the right thing, if you're a Christian, and say, hey, patiently, nicely, hey, um, you're new, right, yep, 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 okay, you've made a mistake here, I paid $52, and now you're giving me $50 back, oh, she rang up the bill as 100 by mistake, because she didn't know what she was doing. She shouldn't really have been there, right? Until she was, like, proven adequate to use that machine. She made too many mistakes, but we didn't yell at her and carry on and pull our hair out, you know, and all this sort of stuff. We just said patiently, you know, nicely to her, like, you're new, you know, okay, uh, understandable. She went back and forth and got the supervisor, could have got crabby at her. Cut it up. Cats fighting each other for spot on the bed. Um, yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so if you like this, it's just to get cats in the background. Two brothers fighting each other for position, I guess. One thinks he's King Kong, and the other one's smaller, but he fights him off and all that sort of stuff. But that one starts to trouble anyway. Anyway, so yeah, we hope that this video gives you that insight to realize you know, what you're seeing you're seeing through Christ's eyes say right you're feeling it and you're thinking become his vessel or his means you know that uh, that he can come through and use okay you can he can see what you're seeing or he's seeing through you what you're seeing right and he's feeling physically you know and he's telling you right from wrong right decision make the right actions yeah, so it's kudos to you. It's like righteousness given to you because of your right acts, and then the consequences or the rewards or the dire consequences uh, as a result of your wrong decisions, your wrong choices, deciding to rip the person off, rip that McDonald's off, comes back at you, right? Whether it's karmic, you know, God 
It comes from God wherever you want to put it, right? Because you might not be a believer. You might just be an ordinary person. We're not necessarily saying that you're an agnostic or you're an atheist or just maybe one person who says, well, I'm not atheist or either. I just don't believe. Now, instead of us labelling you, oh, that means you're an atheist, an antichrist and all this sort of stuff, right? We're still looking at you as human beings. So, if you like this video, we're going to end it there. We are going to end it there. Click on the like button. Uh, yeah, give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. And add your comments below. And we'll get back to you on those as soon as we can. And then go share this video with all your family, friends and others, church members, etc. So they wake up and realise at the end of the day people are still human. So treat them like a human being. Okay. That's like real love for your fellow human being. It's Christ said, you know, love all, etc., etc. We are the ministry of the real truth. Thank you for taking the time to watch this uh, latest video upload. We really hope you enjoyed it. Now we've got to deal with these cats who are beating each other up for position. <laughs>